this video we'll take a look at solving systems of linear equations. A system of linear equations is simply two or more equations uh, that have been graphed or represented numerically um, or in a table of values and what we are going to be interested in finding is where those lines intersect each other. So here's a here's a graph of a that's not a straight line. Come on, draw me a line. There we go. So here's a here's a line here, and here's a line here. And so this could be uh, representing a system of equations. We have L1, line 1, and over here we have line 2. And of course we know that lines make are made up of us bunch of infinite points. There's This line is made up of a whole pile of x, y values. This line is made up of a whole pile of x, y values. And in this particular example that I've drawn here, sketched on the graph, all of the points on L1 and all of the points on L2 are different except for this point right here, which we call the point of intersection. It's where the two lines cross. And we're interested in trying to find out where that point is. So we're going to take a look at how we can find the point of intersection when we have two equations of two lines. So here I have two different equations. I got y equals negative 2x plus 4 and x minus 3y equals 9. And I'm, I'm going to solve this system of equations, which means I need to find the point where those two graphs cross. So I'm looking for the, the xy value, trying to find the xy value that works in this equation and the xy value that works in this equation. So we could, we could do a table of values for equation 1 and do a table of values for equation 2 and hopefully come up with the same point that works in both of them, but that's that can be a pretty time-consuming pro process and it, and it would take a long time probably to find that one. So instead I'm going to graph this. I'm going to graph this equation here and then I'm going to graph this equation here and then from my graph I, sh I should be able to find where those two lines cross. So this first one's already written in y equals mx plus b form. So I know the y-intercept is 4 and I know that the slope m is negative 2, which is rise over run, so negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept. There it is there, 4. And my slope is negative 2 over 1, so I need to go down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And now I'm going to connect my dots. in my beautifully straight line. <laughs> Here I have the graph of my first line. And so all of these all of these points on the line are solutions or would work in that equation. So now I need to look at all the points that would work in this equation. The problem with this one is it's not written in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to isolate the y here. So bring the x over to the other side. And now I can divide by negative 3 to isolate y. And just tidying things up here, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And I'm going to write that as 1 third x, because that's my slope and I need rise over run. So this is like a 1 here. So negative 1 divided by negative 3, positive 1 over 3. And positive 9 divided by negative 3 would be negative 3. So I now have my y-intercept. It's minus 3. And my slope is 1 third. So y-intercept of minus 3. And a slope of 1 third. That's rise over run. So up 1 over 3. Ooh, I think I've got the point right there. Rise of 1, run of 3. Rise of 1. 1, run of 3. So I'm going to connect these dots. And I have 
the two lines graphed. And so now I can find from my graph that the point that works in both of these equations is the point 1, 2, 3, minus 2. 3 minus 2 is the single point that satisfies this equation and satisfies this equation. So I've now solved the system of linear equations. This is the point that works in both equations. Let's just double check that. So the first one was, um, that was my red equation, so I'll do it in red. y equals negative 2x plus 4. So this is my x value, this is my y value. Let's check and see that it works in the equation. So I'm going to put minus 2 in for y, and I'm going to put 3 in for x. And so the left side's minus 2. The right side would be negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. It works. Let's try the blue equation. It was x minus 3y equals 9. So I'm going to put my x value in here, and I'm going to put the y value in here, and it should work in this equation as well. So 3 minus 3 times minus 2 Minus 3 times minus 2 is positive 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. And so 9 does equal 9. So that, that point works in that equation as well. So 3 minus 2 is the solution to this system e of equations because it is the point that satisfies this equation and it's the point that satisfies this equation. And we can see from our graphs that it's the place where those those two lines cross. So if we were looking at table of values, if we look at our first graph, y equals negative 2x plus 4, if I start putting some values for x in here, uh, red please, if x is 0, we can see y was 4. When x was 1, y would be 2. If x is 2, y would be 0, or putting it in here, negative 2 times 2, negative 4, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And when x is 3, negative 6, two, negative 2 times 3, negative 6, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. We get our point there for this one, the blue one. If we did some table of values here, when x is 0, one-third of 0 is, this is minus 3. So you see the points weren't the same there. And when x is 1, we'd have 1 third minus 3, which is negative 2 and 2 thirds, so not the same. When x is 2, we'd have 1 third times 2, that's 2 thirds. 2 thirds minus 3 is negative 2 and a third. And it's not until we get to, my, to 3 that a third of 3 is 1, 1 minus 3 is minus 2. And so these points end up being the same. So the table of values are not particularly useful. There's a lot of work to generate all these points. It's much simpler to to draw the, the two graphs. And then of course there's another way that we can we can do this and that's using technology. So let me get my graphing calculator up here. So here's here's my Casio and I'm going to go to graph and I'm going to enter the two equations in the graphing calculator. And the graphing calculator has to have the equations written as y equals mx plus b. So the first equation, y equals negative 2x plus 4, negative 2x plus 4, enter. My second equation was y equals 1 third x minus 3, so that's 1 third x minus 3, enter. And now I'm going to draw it and so it has drawn the two lines on the graph. I'm going to make my view window a little bit bigger. Um, let's go with the minus 10, 10, minus 10, 10 graph. There we go. So here's the two graphs that we that we drew manually on the on the on the graph behind here, done in the calculator. And we're looking for this point right here, the point of intersection. That's the solution of the system of equations. So I'd go F5 graph solve and then ISCT is the intersection point. And 
it has found for us the x value and the y value that are the same in both equations. So that's how graphing technology can, can help us find those, those points as well. So if we're asked to find the solution to a system of equations... What that really means is find the point where the two graphs intersect. And we know that the blue line represents all the points that work in the first equation, and the red line would represent all the points that work in the second equation. What we're looking for is that point where they work in both equations, the place where it intersects. So the solution to a system of equations is the point where the two graphs intersect, can also be defined as the point, the xy value, that works in both equations. In other words, it's the xy value that when you substitute it into the first equation and substitute it into the section equ second equation, it, it works in both of them, it satisfies both equations. And if we were doing a table of values for each equation, it would be the only pair, the only xy pair, that would be the same in each table. And so we know that we can find the, that point of intersection by simply graphing the two lines and finding where they cross. We could, I suppose, do a table of values and find out, find the points that are the same. And once we have the point, it's very easy to check. Just take the point and put it into both equations and make sure that the left side equals the right side. So happy graphing.